What's up everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to another problem. A cubic function has x-intercepts of negative 2, negative 1, and 3. It has a y-intercept of 12. Where does this function have a value of 24? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to create an expression or an equation for this cubic function. Notice how we're given enough information to do so. So, we're told that a cubic function has x-intercepts of negative 2, negative 1, and 3. So in factor form, that means that this function is going to be x plus 2, right? So this factor here represents an x-intercept of negative 2. An x-intercept of negative 1 would have a factor x plus 1, and then an x-intercept of 3 would have a factor x minus 3. And then, there's some kind of a value here, some kind of constant, we don't know what it is. But we are told that this cubic function is going to have a y-intercept of 12. So we know that this function goes through the point 0 and 12. That's the coordinate of the y-intercept. Now sometimes they'll tell you what the y-intercept is, like in this case, then you create the coordinate 0 and 12 or sometimes they'll give you another coordinate on the function just straight away. So they'll say the function goes through a coordinate two and five. Well, whatever they give you, you have to take that coordinate and you have to plug it in for x and y and solve for that a value. So in this case, a y value of 12 occurs when the x value is zero. So we plug in 0 for all the x's and plug in 12 for y. So we got 12 equals a, 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Multiplying all these out, 2 times 1 times negative 3 gives us negative 6, times a gives us negative 6a, that is equal to 12 divide both sides by negative 6, a is equal to negative 2. So we know that this cubic function that we are given, this is its equation because that a value is negative 2 and we use the y-intercept of 12 to solve for that. So now that we are done that, we can move on to answering the question. So we have the equation of the cubic function. Where does this function have a value of 24? Now notice how this wording is a little weird. Where does this function have a value of 24? We don't run into wording like that very often. Basically, another way to write this question is at what x value does the function have a y value of 24? All right, so that may, uh, may make more sense to us. So where does this function have a value of 24? That's the same thing as at what x value does the function have a y value of 24? The value of a function is always the y value. So what we simply do is we plug in 24 for y. And then we have this negative 2, x plus 2, x plus 1, and then x minus 3 on the right side. And now notice how we have a polynomial equation. Now to solve this polynomial equation, what we're going to have to do is bring everything over to one side, make sure the opposite side is equal to 0. So what I suggest we do is we bring this 24 over. However, unfortunately, in order to do that smoothly and simplify everything, we're going to have to expand that uh, right side, which is going to take us quite a while because we have three brackets to expand. So what you want to do, or what I'll do, is I'll expand these two brackets first. So I'm going to foil them out. And when you foil them out and simplify everything, simplify those two middle terms, you'd end up getting x squared minus 2x minus 3. 
and then we still have this 24 on the left side. We haven't brought it over yet. And then what we do is um, we have to FOIL these two brackets out. So we'll take this x value, multiply it by all three terms in this bracket, and then take this 2, multiply it by all three terms in that bracket. So what you'll end up with is x times x squared is x cubed, x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared, x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Be very careful in this step with your algebra. It's really easy to make a mistake. And then 2 times negative 3 gives us negative 6. And then we still have this 24 on the um, left side. So, a couple of things you can do here. You can distribute this negative 2 inside the bracket, but notice that this negative 2 is being multiplied by this whole expression. And notice how 24 is a multiple of negative 2. Negative 2 is a factor of 24. So, what you can do is you can divide both sides by negative 2. Right? So negative 2 goes away, and then 24 divided by negative 2 gives us negative 12. And negative 12 is equal to this whole remaining bracket. So again, you don't have to do this step here, but I just noticed that it would make it a lot easier to get rid of that negative 2 and then have a smaller number on the left side here versus taking that negative 2, distributing it for every part of this expression, a lot of chance to make a mistake there, and then you're just working with bigger numbers. I feel like it's easier to do it this way. But either way, if you distributed and then did it the longer way, you would still end up getting the same answers in the end, as long as you don't make any algebraic mistakes. So this remaining bracket here, before I write it down, what I want to do is I want to simplify some like terms. So this x cubed is by itself, so let's just write that. Then we have this negative 2x squared plus 2x squared. Notice those are like terms and those are going to net out to 0. Negative 2 plus 2 gives us 0. Then we have negative 3x minus 4x, that gives us negative 7x. And then we have the negative 6 remaining as is. So notice that because that's the only expression left, when we divided the negative 2's, there was a 1 left over. We don't have to put a bracket there. So we got negative 12 equals x cubed minus 7x minus 6. So if we bring that negative 12 over, it becomes positive 12. So x cubed minus 7x minus 6 plus 12 and then we can simplify that minus 6 plus 12 to positive 6. And now notice how we are left with a simple polynomial equation. x cubed minus 7x plus 6 equals 0, so now we just have to solve that. So taking that remaining polynomial equation, let's just factor this right side. Let's work with this polynomial, so let's label it f of x. So we got x cubed minus 7x plus 6. Notice how this is a cubic function. The degree is higher than 2. So we have to use the factor theorem to find that first factor. And luckily for us, if we plug in f of 1, it's going to equal 0. So by the factor theorem, we know that x minus 1 is a factor. So now what we can do is we can take that polynomial and divide it by x minus 1. So x minus 1, how many times does it go into x cubed minus 7x plus 6? Now notice how there's no x squared there, so I just realized that. Let's put a placeholder for x squared. So x goes into x cubed x squared times, x squared times x gives us x cubed, x squared times negative 1 gives us negative x squared. Subtract, and then uh, 0 x squared minus negative x squared, that gives us positive x squared. 
bring the negative 7x down. x goes into x squared x times. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. Subtract these. Negative 7x minus negative 1x gives us negative 6x plus 6. When we bring that plus 6 down, x goes into negative 6x negative um, 6 times. And then negative 6 times x gives us negative 6x. Negative 6 times negative 1 gives us positive 6. And when we subtract those, we get 0, which makes sense because as we mentioned, x minus 1 is a factor. So we took that x cubed minus 7x plus 6, broke it down into two factors, x minus 1, which was the factor we found through factor theorem, and then this x squared plus x minus 6, which is the quotient that we got when we did the long division. So notice that we still have to factor this remaining quadratic. When you factor that, you end up getting x plus 3 x minus 2. So took this polynomial, factored it on the right side, and now notice how we can solve for x by making each of these brackets equal to 0. So when does x plus 3 equal 0? When x is equal to negative 3? When does x minus 2 equal 0? When x is equal to 2? So those are your three answers, 1, negative 3, and 2. So at what x value does the function have a y value of 24? Well, at x values 1, negative 3, and 2. Now you can also check your answers. If you remember, the equation of this cubic function that we made was this here, y equals negative 2 bracket x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. We got that with the x-intercepts and then solving for that a value with the y-intercept. So what you can do is you can take these x values, plug it into that equation that you have, and make sure that for those x values you're getting that y value of 24. And when you do so, you'll realize that that works out. So this cubic function here, it's going to have coordinates 1, and 24, negative 3, and 24, and 2, and 24. And that's actually another way they may want you to write out the answers in coordinate form instead of just giving the x values. So then you just put the corresponding x values that you got with that y value of 24 that you were solving for.